Splatoon 3 has weapons. No, but seriously, this game actually has so many weapons that it could be difficult to really get used to all of them. So in this video, I'm going to give you a tip for every single weapon in the game, and in a future one, I'll cover a tip against every single weapon in the game. I'm a pro player who's won an NA championship before and competed at top level for many years, so I hope these tips can help you improve at the game. Let's get into it and subscribe if you enjoy. Sploosh, do not always run in with your curling bomb. I see people do this every time they throw one, and if you do that, it's going to be picked up on a lot. If you push forward with it even a little bit, enemies have to watch your curling bomb to see if you follow it, but if you always follow it, they're always going to catch you. Sometimes just poke it and stay back. Junior, use your bomb, like, all the time. Junior has a larger ink tank than every other weapon with an extra 10% and is easily the most ink efficient main weapon in the game. This means you can throw spot bombs with almost no penalty that can help you in spacing, poking, painting, fights, special output, you name it, so use it all the time you can. Arrow spray. With fizzy bomb, it is essential to helping you get higher special outputs, which is basically the reason you play this weapon. If you're painting up close, use the arrow spray. If you have nowhere safe to paint near you, use the full charge fizzy bomb. I tend to just flick my left stick left to right as fast as possible to get the charge off quickly. The jumping can also help. Splash. You have perfect jump accuracy and a bit better mobility than other shooters. Use it. Most weapons here don't actually want to jump or squid roll that much in the shooter category and more remain grounded. You are the exception. If you need to reach someone, don't be afraid to jump. You want to use that as much as possible. 52. Do not always open with your wall. Wall makes you very predictable and basically traps you in place since you can't walk ahead of it without just getting bombed, especially at higher ranks. Instead, if you're playing stealthily, you can do an option where you play the shark, get a kill, and then immediately throw your wall afterward. This will give you a pick, and then the wall can be used to keep yourself alive, allowing your team to react and play off the 4v3 while you're protected. Spotter shot players, do not treat your weapon as a pure slayer. You have a suction bomb that paints well, and a very fast to charge inkzuka. This is useful for getting you back in especially, so play for your special sometimes. Alright, so this tip mostly applies to zap players from Splatoon 2, where you are really passive with the weapon, and while you still want to play for your special a lot, when you have that tactic cooler, do not just throw it at the back of the map and stay there painting. It's an aggressive special and one you want to use to go in with your team. The jump accuracy and run speed are especially helpful for your weapon, so you should be turning on the Slayer mode most of the time you're using that special. Splattershot Pro players, use a little bit of Intensify Action. You're one of the few weapons that has very good grounded RNG, and thus Intensify Action is stronger for you than it is on other weapons. And for weapons that are not blasters, you barely need any to majorly reduce that jump RNG. So get used to running it. Jumping is one of the few tools to help your weapon actually stand out. You want to get used to it. 96 players, use your sprinkler as a mini meat shield. It can actually tank a little bit of damage and it paints around you, which can be useful. If you're up close and have the ink for it, use it by your feet to protect yourself. Jet Squatcher players, do not pop vacuum every time you full charge the special. I see this a lot and it mostly comes from Splatoon 2 having a terribly designed special that even at top level, Jet Squatchers would simply try to spam as many of as possible. Those days are over though. Vacuum is a very coordination dependent special and the best way to get value out of it is to use it with a teammate who can take advantage of the fact that you're basically making them invincible. Do not just pop it every time you get it, think about the proper timing to use it. For L3, this is going to sound similar to Pro, but get used to Intensify Action Up. In this case, you have perfect RNG when grounded, so if you run a good bit of Intensify, you'll have near perfect in the air, which is very useful for this weapon. For H3 players, I would highly recommend practicing your squid rolls and especially shooting out of it. With your perfect accuracy, you have good access to them and has one of the slower weapons in the game, it's very important to get as much mileage out of them as possible. Squeezer players, do not forget your painting mode exists. Obviously, your normal shooting mode is very good and pokes people at a distance well, but sometimes it's better to play for your special, and I see many squeezer players who don't struggle with mashing forget that the painting mode even exists. Carbon rollers, do not rely on your horizontal flick. It is only good if you are literally right next to the opponent. While they are much harder, vertical flicks give you a bit more range, are much more reliable, and can two-shot more easily, so it's much better to get used to using those as your primary form of attack. For normal rollers, the main thing I would say is remember to use your big bubbler for your team sometimes. It's easy to get locked into the aggressive style and only use big bubbler selfishly since curling bomb gives you such good mobility into the enemy base, but this can also be used to rotate to your teammates and protect them, which is something the special is really good at, so don't be afraid to do both. Dynamo players also really need to master squid roll, but in particular yours is a bit harder. In order to do a horizontal flick out of a squid roll, you need to input the shoot button right as you do the squid roll input. But this is the only way to get the horizontal flick, which is significantly better. Dynamo's one-hit kills do not have as much range as it seems like it does, and so being able to leap forward not only keeps you evasive, but allows you to close the gap and effectively give you a little bit more distance. I hate saying this because this playstyle is lame, but Flings' painting on its vertical flick is one of the best tools in the game as it goes incredibly far, is quite inefficient, and you have decent mobility during it. You also have Tena Missiles, which is basically a free way to get recon on every enemy player and let your team in. So oftentimes, 
times, rather than being aggressive, you're going to be wanting to play for the special and using that to let you and your teammates in. Swiffers are the only charge weapon in the game to charge full speed in the air, so be sure to take advantage of this by using jump shots under ledges to cover yourself and be able to hit spots that normal chargers can't. Gootuber players, be sure to take advantage of your main special gimmick. No, not that one. The tap shots. They go super far, which is great for paint, painting range, and can even help assist your teammates in fights. And as a bonus, it even combos well with a rolled torpedo if you hit the direct hit. As for bamboo, you really want to be aware of what your teammates are doing. If they're in a fight, you can probably one-tap the opponent. Do they have a burst bomb they're poking at someone? You want to take advantage of that. Any form of chip damage is very valuable for you. Be aware of it. For normal charger, don't worry about your aim as much. Try to think more about where you're standing. You want to be in spots where you can pressure people even if you don't hit the shots, and it's especially important when you're close to your special because you want to be vacuuming for your teammates, not just panicking on snipe and then getting ignored. E-leader players do not forget to set up your mines. With the combination of those plus wave breaker, you are actually really difficult to rush down, but if you don't have your mind set up beforehand, you're not going to be able to defend yourself as easily. Slosher is a very basic one, but get used to how to actually flick your sloshes. They're very useful for close range combat or for hitting people at specific angles. Try slosher players, you might not know this, but the middle slosh has more range than the outside ones. In fact, it can even outrange some short range shooters, especially if you have a little bit of high ground. Sloshing machine does not kill as quickly as you think. Even with direct hits, any up close melee weapon will probably trade you out at worst if they're up close to you. As such, you want to take a note out of the blaster's book and try to keep your effective range against any short range weapons, meaning they're at a distance and you can just strafe backward, taking advantage of your speed to keep them at a distance. For expo players, this is going to be a bit of an advanced tip that's going to take a while to get used to, but any hit of your main weapon will reveal the opponent on the map. So if you're trying to hit someone over an angle, which will be quite common, you can flare open the map to check their location and try to follow them or at least be aware of where they are. Blob players, you want to try to find spots where the blobs can actually bounce and stay in an area for longer. This weapon is insanely good at walling out locations with how slow the shots travel, but if they're going to go right off a cliff wherever you're sloshing it, you're not really taking advantage of the main weapon very much. For mini players, take advantage of jumping more while you're firing. This weapon actually has really good jump height compared to the other splatling, so it's quite useful for that situation. Heavy is going to be my generic tip for every splatling, but there's nothing too special about this one, which is uh, use run speed. Unlike all of them, but Nautilus, please, it helps so much with your strafing speed. For Hydra, make sure to play for your Booyah Bomb if you're dealing with longer range weapons on the map. Trying to approach something like a Charger isn't going to work out too well in most situations, and your special is the best tool to get your team in, move them out of the way, and allow you to put up more presence. For ballpoint players, if you're fighting in your short range mode, the charge time is so fast that you can take advantage of swim form in between your charges a little bit to be able to get some extra mobility in your fights. For Nautilus players, remember the brand new Squid Roll and Surge does work with your charge hold, and since you have a faster and longer lasting one than normal chargers do, you can take advantage of it better than most weapons. I'm going to combine Luna and Normal Blaster with the basic tip to focus on your spacing. This is a tip for all blasters, but especially applicable to these two, which is you want to try to maintain the effective range where you can reliably hit indirects. For example, if your opponent moves to the right, you should be able to follow them. If they go toward you, you should back up to keep that effective distance. Do not just go for directs. Range Blaster is the worst ink efficiency out of all the blasters, by far, and it also has extreme lighting frames that prevent you from recovering your ink immediately. So if you're trying to use this weapon, be sure you allow yourself to recover your ink for a good amount of time. If you just try to shoot and recover a little bit for the next shot, you're going to have a ton of downtime. If you're playing Clash Blaster, keep in mind you have a large indirect radius, but a slow kill time. You want to take advantage of any form of cover or teammates to help you play around that weakness, as a lot of other short range weapons like shooters will just kill you way faster if you try to play like a normal weapon. For Rapid and Rapid Pro, there's a technique called sparking that can be done for all blasters, which is shooting the ground near your opponent to get a little spark that can do minor amounts of damage. This is especially useful for the Rapid Blasters because it combos perfectly with a direct hit for a kill, so if people are up close to you, this is something reliable you can go for. Next up for the brushes. Ink brush should keep in mind that they have permanent ink resistance whenever they roll, meaning you won't take damage from enemy ink even if you turn straight into it. Because of this and your high rolling speed, you can play behind enemy lines and be incredibly annoying, farming specials behind them or getting quick kills depending on the mode. As for Octobrush, you are a lot slower than Ink Brush, so I'd highly recommend Squid Roll flicking or jumping when you flick to get a little bit of extra distance. That bit of mobility will allow you to chase enemies and be a lot harder to hit yourself. For Dapple Dooleys, remember you can cancel the Squid Roll and Surge into your Dodge Rolls. It can be really useful for giving you just a little bit of extra distance or peeking over ledges, which is especially important with how little range this weapon has. For the normal dualies, take good advantage of your standard fire. It's honestly decently strong and not committing to the end lag a roll has can be useful in a lot of situations. It's not a weapon you want to spam them 
one. For the Dooley Squelchers, while it's a bit difficult, I would recommend getting used to the roll tech, which is rolling and then immediately jumping out of it while resetting the stick to neutral. This allows you to jump with some of the accuracy from the squid roll itself and makes you really mobile and hard to hit. For Glugas, this is applicable to all Dooleys, but especially helpful here with how slow they are. Remember, you can throw sub weapons in between your dodge rolls. So if you roll, you can then throw your wall and then use your second roll and appear right behind it for a good amount of cover. For Tetra Dooleys, do not spam all four rolls at once. You have some of the highest end lag in the game, so sometimes using just two or three of them if they're enough are good so you can use the second two rolls to quickly move when the opponent reacts. For the normal umbrella, do not launch your shield all the time. It takes forever to come back and your weapon is horrible at fighting without it. Remember, if your shield is up, you can just swim out of it for some mobility or shoot when you have an opening to refresh that timer. Ten umbrella players do the opposite. This one's more obvious because the shield launches incredibly fast on that weapon, it comes back really fast, and the shield gets extra resistance when it's launched. This is incredibly useful for taking space for you or your teammates with how powerful that shield is. Lastly, for the Brellos with Undercover, be sure to flare your shield rather than constantly holding it up. Whenever your shield is down, it regenerates HP immediately. So if you're able to drop it while one of your shots goes off and then pull it back up, it'll regen some of its health and tank for longer. This is incredibly useful because Undercover Brella does not have a lot of HP, so every little bit extra you can get counts. There's a lot I could say about the Tri-Stringer, but probably one important thing to note is you can paint better by looking up and down when you shoot, and that's really important to know because without that, it's some of the worst paint in the game. Reflux, it obviously paints really well, but it can also kill pretty quickly. It's important to note that horizontal shots are better if you need reliable damage, while one-hit kills are better if you need to kill someone who's not weak at all. And finally, there's the Splatanas. For the normal Splatana, do not treat this like a brush. Its kill time is much slower, and the attacks have good range and mobility, so it's important you actually play your range and damage people first before going up close. And last of all, for the Splatana Stamper, don't over-rely on your burst combo. Yes, a charge slash to a burst bomb is a very reliable combo, but a normal slash will also combo with it and use much less of your ink. Make sure you're using the burst bomb at the right time so you're not spending as much time recovering your ink. That's a piece of advice for every weapon. Let me know if you guys like this video and I'll do a piece of advice against every weapon so you can get good at your hard matchups. And I'll see you guys next time.